Hi, this is Kevin Balmer, CML Deputy Director, and welcome to this week's edition of the CML Statehouse Report. We heard from Governor Polis in his first State of the State address, and uh, we heard a lot of his priorities for his upcoming term. Uh, a lot of it had to do with health care and, uh, and child uh, education, pre, uh, pre-K and kindergarten. Um, the, uh, the key areas that we uh, focused in on that we'll be interested in and, and uh, having more dialogue with the new administration about uh, is, is health care cost for sure because municipalities are clearly impacted by that both as employers but also with the workforce. Um, also, uh, the, the governor said that uh, climate change is real and there will be no pretending otherwise. It will be very interesting to see what his approaches are. He really focused in on water as being a key area and, uh, and so the, the governor is going to have a lot to say about uh, uh, environmental programs related to that. Uh, in my area, uh, I, I am uh, interested in, in what uh, the governor had to say about Colorado's tax code. He's mostly talking about income taxes, but he did make some references, or at least some tangential references, to things related to sales tax, particularly with a vendor fee proposal and capping vendor fees uh, at the retail level and then using that revenue um, uh, elsewhere. Uh, so that uh, was a star- strong start to the session. I know there will be a lot of reaction from uh, legislators for sure, but also folks who listen to the state of state address. And it sets the tone for the legislative session, which is now uh, fully underway a week in. And, uh, and so now we get to talk about uh, legislation. Uh, a few bills that I want to put on folks' radar screen early on here, uh, and we're going to see a whole lot more over the uh, days ahead. Uh, so it be a pretty fast pace here at the beginning. But one is related to uh, local governments being allowed to regulate nicotine products. This is House Bill 1033, uh, sponsored in the House by Representatives Kerry Tipper and Chris Hansen. Um, this, uh, I'm sorry, Chris Kennedy. This uh, legislation uh, is uh, mainly coming from anti-tobacco lobby that wanted to make sure that local governments have full authority to regulate and tax, whether they're statutory or not. Uh, and be able to get the, uh, and still get the share back of state sales taxes included. The introduced bill, frankly, has a lot of problems. It's uh, modeled after the marijuana special sales tax uh, uh, legislation, not uh, really the right source, but we're going to meet with the sponsors and uh, talk to them about how to uh, uh, perhaps clean it up and then talk about it as a policy matter going forward. Um, uh, also in the sales tax uh, world, there are a couple of different bills that uh, authorize sales tax uh, for certain special districts. One is House Bill 1047 uh, that talks about uh, metropolitan district fire protection sales tax. The other is a would be a new early childhood development district. Uh, both would have sales tax authority uh, and that is uh, potentially a problem in the sales tax complexity world. Uh, special districts primarily, with the very few exceptions, rely on property taxes. Uh, and so we're going to be talking to the sponsors and with others about whether or not it's really appropriate uh, for sales tax authority to be extended for that purpose. Um, and then uh, uh, there, uh, again, in the sales tax world, there was Senate Bill 6. Uh, you uh, may have read in CML stuff in previous um, State House reports from last year or, or in uh, any of our publications over the interim about simplification and the sales and, s- and use tax simplification task force, which was an interim committee. One bill is proposed, it's Senate Bill 6, CML does support it. It would uh, require the Department of Revenue to create an RFP for a single point of remittance uh, for businesses to remit all of their sales taxes to. Of course, this would be optional for home rule municipalities that self-collect. It's aspirational to be sure, but uh, uh, the league does support trying to find ways to simplify sales tax collection and certainly would support those that don't uh, undermine constitutional home rule authority in this area. And then, of course, there's beer and liquor, and there will be beer and liquor legislation, even though we thought we were done with it last session. Uh, the, uh, uh, there was one bill that uh, cleans up uh, some differences between fermented malt beverages and, and malt liquor, and that related to manufacturing and, and distribution. That's Senate Bill 11, and that's going to move forward very quickly. One we're uh, watching. Uh, just because it was part of last year's legislation, uh, relates to um, uh, on-off premises, which were supposed to go away after uh, last year's uh, legislation. Senate Bill 28 would allow them back, but only in certain rural areas. Uh, It has to do with uh, a couple of small uh, businesses that uh, are sort of damned if they do, damned if they don't, uh, and choosing between either on-premise or off-premise. I don't know if that has a chance or not. Um, that was one of the elements of the grand bargain of last year's legislation, but it, it just goes to show that uh, even we think we have everything buttoned up, 
we don't really have it buttoned up. So um, I will make a plug uh, for, uh, for CML's 2019 legislative priorities. It is on our website as well, and we'll be handing out hard copies to legislators. Uh, this is just an overview of the legislative priorities that CML will be uh, looking or applying to legislation, both that we are initiating uh, as well as uh, introduced by others. I encourage you to go to our legislative page at cml.org and look at the legislative priorities. Certainly give us any comments or feedback that you have. Hi, my name is Megan Dollar, Legislative and Policy Advocate with the Colorado Municipal League. This week I'm going to talk about three bills that have to do with substance abuse, specifically opioids. Two of them came out of an interim committee that studied uh, substance abuse and opioid abuse uh, and looked at solutions for the state of Colorado. The first bill I want to talk about is House Bill 1011. Uh, this bill has to do with uh, <laughs> substance abuse recovery. And the big piece of the bill um, that CML is particularly supportive of creates a licensing process for sober living homes within the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. The reason that municipalities are particularly interested in this, and we've been at advocating for a state level uh, regulation of these facilities, is that we have some concerns that on the local level, if we regulated them, they would be conflicting, or that would be conflicting with federal law. Another bill coming out of the interim committee is Senate Bill 008. Uh, that bill does uh, quite a few things that has to do with criminal justice, or excuse me, uh, substance abuse in the criminal justice system. Uh, there are two things that we're following in that bill. The first is the bill uh, adds low-level drug misdemeanors uh, to uh, the system that's already in place that allows for simplified sealing of records. Another piece of the legislation is that it expands funding for the LEAD program, known, uh, that stands for Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion. What these programs do is they allow for law enforcement to get individuals directly to treatment uh, if, they were, if they are addicted to substances, uh, rather than putting, putting them in the criminal justice system. We have two municipalities that currently are LEAD recipients. Uh, the city of Alamosa and the city of Longmont, and they've both had great success. So the fact that this bill will expand those programs is very important for CML. Senate Bill 1 also has to do with substance abuse. Uh, this bill has been introduced by the Senate President, Leroy Garcia, out of the city of Pueblo. Uh, what this bill does is it expands on a, an existing pilot program at the state. This has to do with medication-assisted treatment. Uh, the goal is to expand the current program, which right now serves two counties, Route and Pueblo, to establish more medication-assisted treatment in need-based areas. This bill will increase funding to bring uh, more medica medication-assisted treatment into counties within the San Luis Valley and any other counties around there that may uh, show a need for these programs. The intent is to get individuals to treatment again uh, in underserved areas where someone might not be able to seek help without, the, without this legislation. Hi, my name is Brandi DeLang and I'm a policy and legislative advocate here at CML. I have two bills to go over today for you guys. The first bill I want to cover today is House Bill 1035. This is a bill being proposed by Colorado counties and one that CML is supporting. Um, what 1035 does is remove the cap for electrical inspection fees. Currently under state law, um, the state periodically adjusts electrical inspection fees and local governments are prohibited from deviating from those fees by more than 15 percent. House Bill 1035 would actually decouple these fees and allow local governments to recoup the actual costs associated with conducting um, the inspections. Uh, uh, the other thing I should flag is that this bill will be in committee on January 23rd um, and it will be in the House and uh, House Transportation and local government committee. Um, the second bill I'd like to talk to folks today about is House Bill 1015, which is the recreation of the Colorado Water Institute. In 2017, the institute was automatically repealed, so what 1015 will do is reinstate the institute. Uh, in addition, uh, it directs the institute to work collaboratively with local government entities and uh, water association providers, water quality providers, and other folks out there who focus on uh, drought, climate change, and other water-related issues. Uh, this institute will do all policy and research and is going to be housed within uh, Colorado State University. Um, we are very excited about the collaboration that occurs between local governments and the institute. Uh, and the fi final thing I would flag for folks is that it will be in committee on January 14th at 1.30 p.m. Um, in the Ag and Rural Affairs Committee. 
Hi, my name is Morgan Cullen and I am a legislative and policy advocate for the Colorado Municipal League. A couple of issues that I am currently working on uh, here early on in the session. Uh, one has to do with plastics, uh, specifically the uh, prohibition or the preemption, state preemption of uh, local uh, control over the prohibition of plastic products. Uh, right now there actually is a state law that prohibits local governments from across the state uh, to ban certain types of plastic products. Uh, CML believes this is a matter of local control uh, and we have authorization from, our CML, from the CML Executive Board uh, up to a full repeal uh, this session. So we are working on that right now. Uh, currently, uh, a number, there's been a number of bills that have been floating around. Uh, negotiations are going on. Uh, Senate Bill 32 has already been introduced. Uh, that has to do with um, uh, res restoring local control for uh, polyurethane uh, food uh, products. Um, but that's it. Uh, and uh, so we're looking for a, a larger um, general repeal uh, of the prohibition uh, this session. So uh, that's number one. Uh, transportation is going to be another big issue in 2019 uh, and specifically transportation funding. Uh, and I believe that uh, the, the conversation is going to have to begin uh, with uh, Senate Bill 1, which was uh, the comprehensive legislation that was passed last year uh, did a couple of, num of things uh, that are going to be important this year. Uh, the first thing uh, is it included uh, for, for this fiscal year uh, an additional $150 million that would go to transportation infrastructure. Uh, and that also included uh, $22 uh, million uh, specifically uh, for local governments. Uh, and that would be divided evenly with municipalities uh, and with counties. So uh, ensuring that um, that continues uh, uh, and is part of the package going forward will be a big priority for uh, CML this year. Uh, and then also um, whether or not uh, they do anything as far as a referred measure. Under Senate Bill 1, a $2.34 billion uh, bonding package was going to be or was referred to um, uh, uh, Colorado uh, voters uh, to be uh, considered this fall if a uh, initiative uh, didn't pass in 2018, which uh, ultimately occurred. And thanks again for joining us this week. Last but not least, I want to make sure that uh, members are aware of the CML Legislative Workshop. It'll be a happy Valentine's Day for all. It's at the History Colorado Museum this year. Uh, please do plan to attend. We've got a great uh, agenda. You can uh, register online at www.cml.org. And uh, we really do hope you'll come out. Uh, we've got um, uh, a, a good day planned in our legislative reception here at the CML building afterwards. Thanks and have a great week.